What's going on? What's good? Headlines Barbershop presents um, yours truly, Basio Cuts. Um, Chris Basio, you can follow me on Instagram, you can follow me on Facebook. So, yeah, pretty much we're going to do a before and after. Um, real simple. Uh, the music is brought to you by J. Cole. These are all his instrumentals throughout you know, all his work. Um, but yeah, we're doing a comb over with a hard part, bald fade, and uh, we're also going to clean up his beard real quick for you guys as well. And um, throughout this whole video, I'll be adding caption to let you guys know what I'm using. Like, I'm using the T outliners right here. These are like, you know, some of the best liners ever, you know. Um, even though they, they have it, their downfalls, their positives surely outweigh their negatives. But, uh, you know, I don't want to get off subject. I'll have some more videos on that. And uh, we're going to ball this out. I like to be clean. I like my lines um, even. You know, I don't like, you know, I, I notice a lot of barbers will tell you it doesn't matter. I think it does. Um, right here, we're going to, you know, have the Andes wide open. I go up about an inch, um, give you some room. You got to make room for your blends, guys. You can't be afraid to go up with the clipper. When I first started, I was afraid to go up with the clipper. And I noticed I was, man, I was, that's, that's why I was... People were having bowls when they left my chair in the beginning, you know. So give yourself room to blend this thing, you know. Um, so yeah, as you can see, my lines, I, I try to stay organized. I try to stay clean throughout the whole haircut. And you'll find if you stay organized, if you stay clean, your, 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 you know, your conclusion, your final work is going to come out the same, you know. So right here we have the Andy's Clippers closed. And we're just taking out that, that first line. We're going up about, I would say, like a quarter of an inch or almost a third of an inch. Because we got we got space, you know, to, to go up. But you want to have the Andes closed and take out that, that first line. So, yeah, right here, you know, we're going to go to the second notch. We're going to do the same thing. Go up about another quarter inch. Take out that line that you made in the first first place, and um, start blending that thing up. Like I said, I mean, this is my first time making any type of video at all. My first time editing a video. Right here, we go to um, the third notch from the closed position, so almost all the way open. It's almost open. It's the third notch, and we're you know we're going up another quarter of an inch. And uh, it's almost, as you can see, it's almost blended out. Yeah, so we're pretty much opened all the way. And uh, we're blending out that last line to, to, to give it a little bit of a blend. And if you see any demarcations or whatever, don't start thinking crazy, you know, like, oh, man, that doesn't even look right. You'll see throughout the video, we're going to go back and clean things up, detail things, and make sure everything is, is clean. Because uh, right here, we're, you know, we got the number one, Andy's Magnetic Guard is all the way open. This guard right here is, is unbelievable. This guard is the reason why I use Andy's Masters. <laughs> so, again, we're going up about an inch. Up, giving ourselves room to blend from that last, from that you know, from the um, Andy's open. And I'm doing one side and I'll do the other side at the end of the video. And I like to go at all angles, make sure that I'm cutting against the grain. Right here, we have the zero guard, or I believe it's the 116th guard. Um, we have that all the way open, and we're gonna start um, knocking out that bolt. And I'm not going all the way up. Um, stopping just short of it. Just connecting that one open with that with that zero open. So um, right here in this part, it kind of skipped a whole lot. For some reason, man, my camera was just acting up. So um, I had to improvise. Um, I didn't get to show you how I went from the, the one open. Then I went to the two open and I blended, you know, the one open to the two open. I blended it with the two closed. And then I went up to about a three and a half all the way up to the occipital bone. Just about where it's going to start to curve in. Um, but once we get to the other side, you'll be able to see the, the process on that part. Right here, I'm just going back and I'm cleaning up my work. 
um, doing the detail stuff. And the more time you spend on this part of the haircut detailing it, the better your haircut is going to come out and the more your clients are going to appreciate you. And you'll see that they're, you know, they're going to show you love um, uh, money-wise. So right here, we're, um, I already did the back. I did the other side. So I'm just going to connect it. Um, and I don't normally cut hair like this, but for the sake of the video, I'm doing each side you know, separately. So um, I balded it out. Now I'm going with the Andes all the way open again, about an inch up, giving myself room to blend the zero to the Andes open. Um, again, the Andes is all the way closed, and I'm starting to take away these lines. And um, I'm going about a quarter inch every single step of the way until it's completely blended out. All right, the second notch from the closed position. So this is just a little bit open. And we're going up again, another quarter inch. And it's not going to be perfect when you're done with these little steps. But like I said, when you go back in detail, that's when it's going to start getting real blurry, real nice. And I don't normally use that brush. Um, right here, I'm, I'm cutting here at my house. This is the um, the third notch from the closed closed position, so almost open, almost. All right, so that's blended up, and now we're gonna go with the number one guard all the way open, just like we did on the other side of the head in the beginning, and then we're gonna go about an inch up. Like I was saying, I you know I'm cutting here at my house, so I don't have the normal tools that I usually use, uh, but it's not the it's not the tools, it's the barber, right? Uh, going just like we did on the other side, the Andy's Magnetic Zero Guard. It's about a 116, and it's all the way open, and we're starting to take these uh, the bulk out. Now we have the Zero Guard close to the middle position, the middle notch, and we're taking out some more bulk. I'm blending down in order to connect it to the half. Now we got the Zero um, Guard all the way closed, and we're really starting to connect the Andes um, with no guard all the way open to the one, the number one guard open. We're starting to connect it, as you can see. We're removing the bulk. And we're going down as we blend on this, on this part. From the one and a half, we're going down, blending it to the half. And like I said, I go back and I always detail my work. Making sure it's right. Closing it, closing it. A lot of people, man, I mean, they don't have perfectly shaped heads. He has a whole lot of, like, you know, indents and and um, and parts where his, you know, his, his uh, scope, you know, it kind of goes out. So there's tricks to, to that, and I'll show you right here. Stretching the skin. So I got the blade slightly open. There's a line that I couldn't get because it was in an indent in his head. So I stretched the skin in order to, to really get that line out. That's one of the tricks right there that you won't learn in barber school. Stretch that skin out with the blade slightly open from the closed position. So it's almost closed, it's slightly open. And you can see that line that was there and that little indent is gone now. This is the Andes 2 all the way open. Like I told you the, the last side I couldn't even show you this part. So I went from the one open to the two open, and now I got the number two guard closed all the way, and I'm going to start removing that bulk. But I'm not going to go as high as I did when I had the guard open. And again, every single, every single time you change the guard, you're going about an inch up. So now I got the number one guard all the way open, and I'm starting to take out that bulk because the line before that was the number one open. So if I got the number one open going into the number two, it's starting to take out that bulk. It really is. And we're blending down. From the number two open, we're blending down to a number one closed. I 
me if you guys got any advice on the video you know the way i could position myself i think like right here i could have been standing on a different side to kind of show you so you guys could have more uh, a better view uh, this is the number zero closed we're going from you know the, the two open all the way down just backtracking on these steps but instead of fading up we're fading down and right now I'm detailing my work you can see I'm doing the uh, the, stre the stretching technique where I stretch the skin and, I, and then I blend and that helps like I said when you get into those indents um, and right here I'm, I'm starting to trim the beard I have a the number two guard on um, and what I was pointing out there is that he has light spots in his beard this right here will, will, will differentiate you from other barbers like pay attention to, to those things if a dude has a light spot don't run that number two guard in there because it's gonna look shorter than the other parts you know like right here I have the number two the number one guard and I'm going with the grain because at the very edges of his beard I want to make sure it's a little bit darker so when I line it up it's gonna look you know it's gonna have that little pop but pay attention to those light spots and you know don't dig that same number um, that you're doing everywhere else into that spot because it's gonna look lighter than everywhere else go a little bit you know longer and right here I'm blending out the beard here's another thing that barbers will do that you know they'll completely leave that bow that line there instead of blending it out and you can ask your customer what they prefer I mean the customer might want to go into a point ask them or he might want to blend it out this is how I blend it out Now I'm going, I blend it up, now I'm blending down, gradually open, opening the blade to give that blend, and uh, at the very end I'm connecting it with the trimmer, because that's how I bolted it out in the beginning, right? What I'm not showing you here in this video is that I usually use the foil shaver to really bald that thing out. Um, around the chin area and the mustache area, it tends to grow... Um, more coarse it's it, it tends to grow darker and faster so I like to trim this area down lower than the rest of it and it still looks like it's an even trim so the number one and a half was at the chin I did the half at um, the bottom of the lip and and the mustache area and in the beard area is a number two but as you can see it still looks all even and your customers will appreciate that so when I'm lining it up with my T outliners, I start by, um, underneath the chin. And of course, I'll ask them where they wanted that. Wanted it at. He said um, about the jawline. So I go a little bit lower than the jawline, and um, I'll start there. And then I'll work, once I get that middle part, I'll go um, right underneath the chin, and I'll, I'll blend this out. He likes it a natural look, so I'm not gonna go trying to create my own shapes. I'm gonna follow the, his natural shapes because obviously it doesn't grow so full where you can do that. You know, he wants to keep as much hair as he can so that it looks like a full beard. So now, like I said, I'm gonna connect from the center out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna follow the line, the natural line of the top of this beard to make it linear. You want it to, to follow the same, um, the same shape you want linear lines you know if you got the bottom of the chin going um, going downwards um, and the, the top of the beard going another way it's gonna look out of whack so follow the jawline and uh, make sure the lines are, 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 are sharp and then right here I'll start at the top like I said I'm gonna make sure that the lines are linear he likes a full beard so I'll try to keep it as natural as possible without really going low on the beard and I use the corners of the blade at all times I'm using the corner of the blade because with the corner of the blade I can stay detailed and I'm not I'm not so um, committed when I when I when I put a line in. if I use this, the whole blade you're committed that's it there is no room for mistakes we use the corner it's like sketching a little bit you know also always trim the bottom um, above the lip line but keep it as close to the lip line as possible and then when I get to the top of the um, the mustache I try my hardest not to touch their nose with my clipper 
And the reason why is I don't, you know, for me, that bothers the shit out of me when something's vibrating on my nose. I mean, it's just uncomfortable. And you want the experience in your chair to be comfortable, right? So I don't spend a lot of time lining up the top of uh, the mustache with the clip right to clean it up. I do most of my detail work with the beard with the razor. And right here you can see I use Persona Blades. They're the best, hands down. Mentos Ultra Shave Gel to, to, to have a smooth shave. And Philharmonica uh, Blade Handles. Okay. These are um, disposable blades. I put the gel on the beard, you know, a generous amount. The more, the better, you know. Um, and what I love about it is that it's clear, so you can see what you're doing. But, you know, this right here is a game changer, too. This could, you know, be the difference between you and another barber, you and the competition. Making the experience comfortable. This client right here actually tells me all the time, I'm the only person he's ever had that shapes his beard and, and doesn't hurt him. You know, because he has a thick beard. So, you know, as you can see, it's smooth. I don't have to put a lot of pressure or nothing like that um, in order to line his beard. And another thing that I do, I see barbers all the time using ash to make the lines. They'll even use the gel and the debris from, you know, um, shaving other hairs to make that line more defined. I wipe that shit off because I want to make sure it's truly a clean line. When they get home, they take a shower, they wipe it with their hands, it's not going to look different. <laughs> you know what I mean? So right here, I did a terrible job with the camera. I was the only one handling the camera. I didn't have nobody behind it. So I didn't see that I was actually um, cutting with the scissors um, out of camera. Those aren't the scissors that I normally use. Those are my um, my house cutting scissors. I usually use Philharmonica um, shears that I, that I actually imported from Italy. Um, no, not Italy, I'm sorry, Spain. And, um, but yeah, what I do is I do finger technique. You want one finger length, you want two finger length, you want three finger length, right? I keep it easy, um, simple. I'm a barber, you know, it's, and, and not saying that barber shouldn't use guidelines and all that stuff, but generally our haircuts are short, so we don't need guidelines as much as cosmetologists do, right? I keep it short, two finger, one finger, three finger, four finger, five finger, whatever. And, you know, doing that, I mean, my, my fingers aren't going to grow in, in seconds. So it's going to stay the same length all the way around. And, then, you know, I'll start from the middle and I'll connect it down to the sides. And right here, I'm just lining him up real quick. Right here, I'm lining him up real quick. And I'm keeping it natural. There ain't no pushing back here. You know, he's got a comb over. He's got a nice, clean um, business style haircut. And I'm not going to mess with his line. You know, people people will appreciate that. And even if they don't appreciate that, they'll let you know. Or you can ask them if that's okay. You know what I mean? It's better to be sure than to be sorry, you know? And I usually start with the middle. The same way that I do with the beard. Start with the middle, connect them. Start with the middle, con connect them, you know? It's not that Beijing sharp um, lineup, but the haircut is done the way it should be done. In my eyes, in my opinion. I do these haircuts all day. <laughs> so right here I do a hard part. With the hard part, you know, you can ask them if you want it. You know, if they want it natural looking. A lot of people only want the hard part because they're when they're styling their hair, they don't have to make the line anymore. They just go from where the, the, the hard part is and comb it over. But it, it still looks natural if you do it the right way. Some people like it thick. I have a client, man. He'll tell me three times to make it thicker. And then, I'll you know, I'll make it thicker. I have some clients that they want it to be a barely visible. They want it so that they know it's there you know keep it natural because at work they're not allowed to have these lines um this guy kind of did a little bit in between cleaned it up with the razor and uh, i didn't show you guys but i also did his um his eyebrows i'll make a separate video for eyebrows after this but yeah if you like the video if you like what i'm doing just uh comment Subscribe, let me know, let me know you're feeling it, and I'll put out more videos. 
And I do all types of haircuts. I'm diverse, man. I do everything. So just let me know what haircut you would like to see, and I'll do it.